Well, what's up again there, guys? Brian here, the Three Topics Gamer here to share for you another one of my worst, best ranking tier list style videos to share with you guys today. Now, this list is actually going to serve as a follow up to one of my more popular videos I uploaded this year in terms of ranking all of the Final Fantasy games. So, to follow that up, I've decided to do a ranking of all of the primary protagonists for each of the Final Fantasy games in the numeric series. So, yeah. This is going to be interesting. So before I get into my ranking, like always, if you do happen to enjoy this video by the end, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to help me increase the performance of this channel and hopefully up more low, more videos like this. So as we get into this list, as you can see, I've decided to do it just in a standard grade style tiering ranking. And I'm doing pretty much all of the numeric Final Fantasy games going from 1 to 15. However, the only two that aren't going to be a part of this list are Final Fantasies 11 and 14 because those are MMOs and I haven't played those. So let's get into the ranking. Now let's get the worst one out of the way first just so I can get my anger out. Obviously, the only F tier character on this list has to go to Miss Lightning from Final Damnation 13. Okay, now this pisses me the hell off every time I hear this, but I hear lots of people compare her to Cloud. She is the opposite of Cloud. Take Cloud, give him a sex change, remove all interesting personality, all amount of character growth, any interesting background, put a stick up her ass, and make her the ultimate bitch character for 80 hours. That is lightning in a nutshell. And that's who you're supposed to root for? That's who I'm supposed to be supporting? You gotta be out of your, you gotta be out of your damn mind if you think I'm gonna be doing that. And hey, she's, she's just the tip. She's the tip of the iceberg of what is the problem with that game as a whole. So that is my issue. That's where I put in lightning. There's nothing anybody in the world can say to make me change my mind and I'm not even taking into account how bad or awful she probably gets in the whatever follow-up games came after that but that's just all I want to say about that character just get her out of the way that is where lightning is that is where she's staying let's move on starting off with Final Fantasy 1 with the Hero of Light I have to put the Hero of Light in D tier and the only reason I can do that is because the Hero of Light didn't really have much of a character in the very very first Final Fantasy game uh, the, the Hero of Light as a whole is more of a concept, basically a mixture of the four primary protagonists and one body. And as far as I'm concerned, he wasn't even given, like, a physical body until they did, like, the updated, like, semi-improved version of Final Fantasy 1. And then they did more of him in Dissidia. But because he's more of a concept, I can't really rank him higher than a D because he himself is not a fully realized character. He's just a concept. Now that concept is interesting, but when you don't have an individual personality or trait of his own that belongs strictly to him, there's not much there's not much I can do with him. There's not much of a reason to get invested into his character because there's not much to him on an individual basis outside of the Dissidia games. And heck, we're sticking strictly to just how these characters are on their own. So that's sadly why I have to put him in the D tier. Going on to for the Final Fantasy II, we have Furion. Uh, I thought Furion was a solid main character, nothing too special, pretty average. I mean, he's, he basically has everything you would need uh, just for a standing, you know, main protagonist for a game. So, I think he has a pretty cool look. Uh, I think he has a pretty interesting backstory from what I, from what I can remember when I played it for the first time. And I, I think C is a, is a good spot to put him in. Going into Final Fantasy III, we have the Onion Knight. Again... Just like the Warrior of Light, the Onion Knight themselves is more of a job. Um, that is a job. That isn't necessarily a character. And because of that, outside of the Dissidia games, the Onion Knight can't really have much of a personality. I mean, if we're following just the, the main protagonist, I would say the Final Fantasy III storyline set of protagonists were pretty basic. There wasn't really anything too interesting about any of the individual characters by themselves. So that's why, unfortunately, I have to put him in the uh, D tier. As we go into Final Fantasy IV, we have Cecil. Ooh, Cecil's a really good character. Um, started as a Dark Knight, and just to see his path to becoming a paladin and wanting to save his love and go on this very interesting adventure that gets very, very personal and, and even uh, involves including his, his best friend and encountering a sibling of his um, met for a very, very dynamic main protagonist. I think the only thing that holds him back is because there's such a major focus on other characters that some of that gets taken away from him. He still has a, a, a primary amount of time focus on him, but I think it's not, it's not a bad thing that they focus on the other part because you want to care about them, but I think that there's so many other characters that also have interesting backstories that just takes a little bit more from him. And that's the only thing that keeps him out of the A tier. But overall, 
Final Fantasy IV was a great game and Cecil was an awesome protagonist. Going into Final Fantasy V, we have Bards. Now, the interesting thing about Bards is I think Bards is probably the most unappreciated main protagonist because out of the four playable characters that you have over the course of that game, Bards probably has the least connection to the primary plot. When you think, take of characters like Lena and Farah and Sarah and Galif, they all have stronger connections to the actual plot itself. Bards is simply just an explorer who, you know, we meet him and he's just riding his chocobo and he just so happens to run across uh, Galif and Lena. And from that point on, he just wants to go on an adventure. He is just the average man just seeking for a purpose. And instead of just, at, at any point, he could walk away. But he chooses to stay with this adventure and help out these people and makes a whole group of friends. And I think that makes for an amazing message in terms of rising to the occasion with something that maybe you weren't even involved in. And that, for me, is what makes Bart a truly great protagonist, which is why I would easily put him in the B tier. Going into Final Fantasy VI, we have Terra. Ooh. Terra is easily a top three favorite female character in all Final Fantasy. She is definitely the heart of that game. And now, outside of the primary flaw that I have with Final Fantasy VI in the fact that there are so many characters, Terra is easily the best one out of them. I mean, when you take into the uh, the fact that, you know, she is part Esper, which is kind of like a summoning, and she goes through so much growth, she has all this incredible power, and yet, when you actually see her development as a character of just trying to understand her who she is as a character and try to regain her memories, and then when you find out that after Clefakis kind of succeeds in destroying the world, she decides to look after an orphanage and take care of children. I mean, think about this. This amazing, powerful character with all this un unlimited potential chooses to look after children. And then when she loses her powers at the end, she doesn't, she, 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 she doesn't care about that. She wants to live a normal life. I mean, how many characters can do that? They have godlike power, yet they're willing to give it up and they don't care about that. I think that makes for an, an incredible Incredible character uh, aspect of her, which is why she is absolutely an A-tier uh, character and what is, without question, one of the greatest Final Fantasy games to date. Now, as we go into Final Fantasy VII, obviously, Cloud is an A-class character. No question. I'm not even taking the, the so-called remake into account. Just on his own throughout that game. I mean, this is a character that had a very, very tragic past tried to reinvent himself by using memories of his best friend. And then once he lets go of that... He then rises to the occasion, faces his greatest fear, and is a damn good leader at that. And I think out of any character in that game, character Cloud absolutely made the most growth. And he is absolutely worthy of being an A-tier class main protagonist. I mean, if you want to have all of the aspects that make for a great main character, Cloud absolutely is an example of that. Which is why he's absolutely an A-tier character. And now, this is going to surprise some people. But I'm also going to put Squall. Squall is also an A tier in my list. Now, I know that some people don't really like, like Final Fantasy VIII all that much. But what I like about Squall is, much like Cloud, he also has a somewhat tragic backstory. And yet, for the most part, he is a kind of depressing character. But he is a depressing character who has a very, very strong leadership quality to him. I would even say he's a better leader than Cloud, in my opinion. And he's only 18, and so he has a lot of growth to do. So he is very, very mature for someone who is so young. And the fact that he also has a very, very personal connection somewhat to the main antagonist, and he is the catalyst that actually starts the entire plot of the game, I think is really, really amazing. And the fact that that game like is very, very uh, use uh, of the aspects of time and time travel and the fact that Squall works so well. And trust me, he does a lot of growth. He is not the same person at the end of the game as he was at the beginning. And that 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 is, you, you need that amount of unique growth. You need growth like that to, in order to really have a character be memorable. And Squall is absolutely memorable to me. And that's why I would put him absolutely as an A-tier character. Now, okay. Uh, oh boy. I know I'm gonna get some flack for this. Zidane. Now, in my last Final Fantasy video, I apparently got hit with a whole wave of Final Fantasy IX fans, which was new to me. So, apparently, IX has fans. Okay. But that doesn't change the fact that I still consider Final Fantasy IX to be the most forgettable game I've ever played ever. Not just JRPGs, but games in general. Now, when it comes to Zidane, 
there's only two things about Final Fantasy IX I remember. And that's Beatrix was awesome, and I just did a video about her. And for some reason, this is going to sound weird, Zidane reminds me of David Bowie. I don't know why he reminds me of David Bowie, but David Bowie was cool. And for that, I'm going to give Zidane some points. But however, that doesn't change the fact that when it comes to anything about this character, I don't know anything about him, just realistically. I don't know what he is. I don't know what he does. I don't know why he's here. I don't know how he does it. I don't know what he's trying to do. I don't know how he got here. I know almost nothing about this character outside he has a pretty solid look. Now, having said that, now, even knowing nothing about this character, I'm going to put him in C. Now, I don't want anyone in the comment section coming at me saying, Oh, man, it's, it's so disrespectful you don't know anything about Zidane. The fact that I don't know anything about Zidane at all, character-wise, and I'm still putting him in an average spot, I think I should get some points for that. Any other character like that would have absolutely gotten an F. So, that's all I'm going to say about Zidane for that for that much. Now, if we go into Final Fantasy X... My favorite Final Fantasy, I'm going to put Titus in B. Um, Titus, Titus is, a, is a B character. Definitely a good amount of growth. He is surrounded by the, my favorite Final Fantasy cast of all, of all time. Um, has a strong connection with the main, well, like the main villain, or technically a template of the main villain, which is Jack to his sin at that point. Yu Yevon is technically the main villain. And he, though he starts as a bit of a crybaby, he is not, he doesn't, quite grow to the status of a leader but he does become an important member of the party in terms of them coming up with certain directions that the party needs to go in order to progress the story and i think that is a very good quality for titus and another reason why he cannot take a an a top spot is because there's someone already on his party that is an a tier character and that goes into the next character which is yuna from final fantasy 10 2 and she is absent in a tier character this is just basically a mixture of seeing her grow from being the most important character in Final Fantasy X, and then seeing her change her personality almost completely in Final Fantasy X-2. Now, Final Fantasy X-2 is, without question, a weaker game than the first game, but just to see the parallel between how she was and how she is and how that's allowed her to grow as a character, I think is truly, truly amazing and allows her to really stand out amongst the top-tier set of protagonist characters in all Final Fantasy, which is why Titus is a B, but Unit is an A. Now, as we go into Final Fantasy XI, this is going to seem weird. Um, not 11, 12, sorry. Um, Vayne. I got to put Vayne in D because for some reason, though he has a positive dream in terms of wanting to be a, a, like, a, like a sky pirate, that's all that's to him. I always felt that Ash was the real main protagonist of that story because she actually is important to what is going on with the plot. Van kind of feels more like Bart's in terms of this is a character who isn't really have any sense of importance, but he just kind of finds himself in a big situation and then just kind of sticks with it. Van is simply trying to do what Bart said, but not nearly as well. And he doesn't really have a strong personality. He's just sort of there in the background while characters like Baltier and Ash are really the standout characters as part of that party. I would even say Fran is a much more standout character than Van. Um, and the fact that for many years I thought Van was a girl also was something I found kind of strange. I, I really thought Van was a girl for like a good 12 hours until someone told me that Van was a guy. Because I thought it was just a very masculine woman. Which, you know, when it comes to Final Fantasy character designs, trust me, that's, that's not the weirdest design we've had. So that's why I would have to put Van... In the D tier. And the last character, Prince Noctis from Final Fantasy XV, I'm going to put him in the B tier. Um, no, his fully realized character definitely goes through a amount of growth in terms of rising from having lost his kingdom to losing his father and needing to go on this crazy adventure with his bodyguards and having to do a good amount of growth. I think the only thing that just makes him a little bit, just the only thing that keeps him out of the A tier is his story is so all over the place that even he as a character seems a bit unfocused at points. I mean, he has a clear sense of moral focus, but it can get so muddled at times, and even some of his actions are somewhat questionable for someone who needs to be much more mature for his role as the prince. I think just those little aspects just kind of bring him down only slightly, but he's still overall a great character. So that is my ranking of all the main protagonists from the primary set of Final Fantasy numeric games. Now, if you could rank these Final Fantasy characters how you want, share your list with me and everyone else in the comments down below. And like always, 
Thank you guys for watching. You're awesome. And stay tuned because I will be probably uploading a villain's version of this tier list style ranking next, probably in the next day or two. So make sure you have your notification bell set for that because that will be coming next. So like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome. And I will see you next time.